Welcome to another tech video. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, configuring this TP-Link business grade um, ceiling mount access point. This is the EAP225. Okay, so we've got the TP-Link Amada uh, AC1350 Wi-Fi access point. This is a business grade um, solution. It's the EAP225. So we're going to be pre-configuring this um, for a client as part of an install that we're doing. Um, so we're going to have a look. This is uh, not the first time we've seen one of these, but it's the first time that um, we've done a pre-config setup for a customer. So inside the box we get our unit itself, nice and low profile. This will fit to the ceiling, so uh, inside here we've got our paperwork which we'll have a look at in a sec, but we've got our ceiling mounting bracket, so this will screw onto the ceiling and then the unit itself clips on at the bottom here uh, and, and locks, locks into place. So we've got um, we've got an Ethernet port. This is uh, for PoE um, access. And then we've also got a reset button inside here if you make a mistake and need to change it back to factory default. Also in the box, we've got a PoE injector, which is uh, the way that we get power to the unit, or you can use a PoE switch. And then we've got a UK plug, and we've got our mounting and fixings kit. So we've got some raw plugs, some screws, we've got some big washers, uh, some wing nuts and some screws as well. Box wise, so this is a little leaflet about the uh, Amada solution that they do, which gives you the ability to control your devices um, from a remote portal or from the Amada app, which will run on Windows, Linux <clears throat> on your local network. So the quick installation guide um, gives you uh, an overview, tells you about the unit, how to mount it um, for drop down ceiling tiles, um, how to uh, screw and mark the points and mount it. So that's all you need really on there. And then the configuration mode uh, tells us that you can use directly connected to a PoE switch or your power injector um, and you've got the, the various options there. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we want to get this connected. So we're going to be using the PoE injector. Get that plugged in, switched on. That goes into the unit. Now we're going to take our cable from our network. That is going to go into the LAN port on the injector. And then we're going to take another network cable and this is going to plug into the PoE port on the injector. So you've got LAN and PoE. Um, your power device or the device you want to power plugs into the PoE port and then the other end will plug into the Ethernet port on the back of the router. Now we should see it light up. Okay, so there we've got the power on now. The next thing we want to do is we want to open up uh, and see if we can find this on the network. So, so we're going to take our angry IP scanner and we're going to do a sweep of our network. And there we can see it there, 192.168.10.84. Let's connect to this and I presume logging on will be by admin admin. Go. Say no to that. New, 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 new username we're going to leave as admin. We're going to set a password. We're going to click on next. Okay, so we've got our 
Wi-Fi settings, basic settings. So let's give this, um, let's just give this a test AP. And we'll give it test one, two, three, four, five. We'll give this one test. And we'll give this one, two, three, four, five. Let us, what we want to do is have a single network on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So that's why I've used the same SSID. So devices should be able to connect to either one, but uh, we'll have a look at the setup of this once, uh, once we get it loaded. Okay, so we're going to say yes to that. We're not actually connected to the Wi-Fi network, as you can see. Um, but let's go into wireless. Here are two lots of settings. Radio settings. Okay, that looks all right. Client, we haven't got any clients connected. Okay, and you can see here that the LAN port is gigabit. Go into Wi Fi, radio setting. Okay, I don't need to change any of that. Portal. Okay, so this is um, you can have a, a terms of service for if you were having a, a guest network, basically. We're not going to be using that. Um, we're not going to be using any VLANs. We're not going to be using MAC filtering. And leave it on all the time. Band steering. So we're going to enable this. Now what this does, this will allow you, allow your clients to um, try and join the 5 gigahertz network. If, um, if the signal is not strong enough, then it will drop back to 2.4 gigahertz. Um, so basically, you will have devices like newer devices, they will try and connect to the five gigahertz network. Um, things like older printers, for instance, um, will connect to the 2.4 gigahertz network. So we're gonna click on save that. Quality of service, so we are not gonna be using Quas because um, there's no need for it on the local network. Rogue AP detection, um, we're going to leave that off the time being. And we're going to go to management and we are okay so the fallback ip is 192.168.0.254 that is fine um, but we're going to leave it on dynamic go into our system log okay good web server layer three accessibility please enter the eaps okay that's fine so Pure server port 443. Management access. Okay, so this is quite a useful option if you only want specific devices to be able to log on and access it. So in other words, um, uh, you can lock down certain PCs that have access to it to make configuration changes. SSH all disabled, SNMP we're not going to be using, we can go to system, controller settings we're not going to be using the, the cloud based controller, so we're going to leave all that off, time settings is what we do want to change, so let's set our uh, time settings, so I can't remember what it is but uh, let's go to um, time server UK. want okay so going to just we're going to use UK pool and pop that in there we don't need a secondary server but we can if we want to so for instance we could uh, we could use a different one but this one is um, low balance so we don't need to do anything else we can do get GMT going to click on daylight saving first of all we're going to save that now we should be able to get gmt so the time currently is 8:47 so let's do that to see if we get it updated and there we go so it's updated the time 
Reboot, reset, we don't need to do that. Backup and restore, we don't need to do that. Firmware upgrade. Okay, let's have a look to see if there is some new firmware available for it. So we're going to go to DP Link. Let's go port and we want to go to the download center. Leading mount access point, this is us. Okay, so we want to make sure that we get the right hardware version. And to do that, the hardware version should be written on the bottom of the unit itself. So under the model number, under this first uh, tab here, uh, it says version 4.0. So that's what we need to select for our firmware. Then we're going to change that to version 4. I'm going to click on firmware. 22nd of the uh, 3rd of August. So we're going to download the latest version. Open that up. Unpack it. Right. Now we can go back to our unit. We can browse for. Let's just first of all make sure, see what version we've got. We've got 507, and the version we've just downloaded is 508. So there's a, there is an update for it. So we're going to go back to our system, back to our firmware upgrade. We're going to browse for our file, which will be in our downloads directory. Select 508, and click on update. On the unit itself, you will see it flashing. If you have a look here, it's now flashing because it's doing this update. And then once the update's done, we can then log back in and make sure it was successful. So it was successful, there we go, 508, hardware version 4. Okay, so let's now go and see if we can amend the security settings. If we go into our 3.4 gigahertz, at the moment you can see the security mode is WPA personal. Let's see if it does WPA3, which it doesn't. So this only does WPA2, um, but what we are doing is we're using AES, which is the strongest encryption. Um, we can force that so that it's WPA2 pre shared key only. So we're going to set that to, to that, which is the strongest one. Say OK to that. And now we can go our 5 gigahertz one and do the same. Set that to WPA2 PSK with AES encryption. OK that, then save config. That's it, a really simple and fast configuration. So now that's configured, um, what we will be doing is going back in here, changing the SSID um, back to our customers and creating their passphrase for them. Um, but apart from the initial walkthrough and setup, that's now complete. So if you found that video useful, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just goes to show how easy some of this stuff is to configure. Um, but uh, yeah, just want to say thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.